Share at what age did you know you were going to pursue a career in culinary arts and how did you set about making it a reality? Um, well, I told my parents I wanted to be a chef when I was eight. They thought it probably occurred to me prior to that, but that's when I actually had the physical conversation. Of course, nobody believed me because I was eight, but I never changed my mind. And when I got to Cowan Mary, I catered all of my subjects around doing culinary arts and pursuing it to a more practical level. So I did food nutrition and I did sciences and I did foreign languages. And then I went to BCC, did the associate's degree in culinary arts, did my internship at Sandy Lane, did a competition, and I just kept going from there. I just never changed my mind. Tell us about the competition. All right, so the competition I did was called, it's called World Skills Barbados. And it is governed by a body called World Skills International. There's about 63 member countries, if I remember correctly. And they offer lots of skills. So culinary arts cooking is not the only one. And one of my tutors came to me and asked me if I would be interested in pursuing it. And I never thought I'd actually do competitions because there's a lot of pressure and anything that can go wrong in a competition will. And I'm a person that likes to be in control. But I decided to take the chance and just do it. And I ended up winning. So clearly it was a good decision. Clearly, what age were you and when was that again? Uh, I think I was... 17 when I started, probably 18 by the time it finished, and that was in my second year of Paul Marine, so 2018. Mm -hmm. you, you, you did your internship at Sandy Lane, and now you're an employee of Sandy Lane. I Tell am, us about yes. that, how that goes, without any trade secrets being. Of course. Um, well, it's stressful, but I think being a chef in and of itself is stressful. It's a very high pressure environment, um, but I wouldn't change it for the world for sure. I've learned a lot about myself and personally and professionally since being an employee there i did my internship in 2018 i was actually offered my job before my internship was even completed so when i graduated i started like next month so very fortunate to have been afforded the opportunity to get a job directly out of college a lot of people are not as lucky but it's stressful you know we go in we're quite busy right now the hotel is full so we're doing buffets so you just do the prep that needs to be done get your station ready if anybody needs help you jump in and give the assistance and just try to put on the best and give the guests the standard that they deserve because they're paying a lot of money for it. Correct, they are. A lot of money for it. Um, during this journey, you, you, you would have drawn inspiration or you got influence or you got motivation from anybody in particular or any people you would want to mention here, tutor, your um, mom, I don't know. <laughs> well, growing up, I looked up a lot to Kat Cora because she was one of the only female chefs on Irish Chef America. And just seeing her go head to head with those men was quite inspiring. Like, it let me know that even though I was a woman, I could still pursue this career. Because I think at that point in time, there weren't that many female chefs. So seeing her going head to head with the men was quite inspiring. Uh, I have a very good support system. My family always stands behind me, my mom in particular. Even if I don't believe in myself, she has always believed in me and just let me know that I can get it done. My sister as well. Watching my sister raise a child was quite an interesting experience. I never thought it would happen. Like, Yes, like we're getting to that age to start families, but I didn't think like my sister would have a child. And I have a very, very supportive group of friends as well. During World Skills itself, I actually wanted to drop out several times. It was a very stressful experience because I was going to school, I was going to work, and then having to train. Like sometimes my days were like 16 hours long, and then I had to do it over the next day. It was mentally taxing as well as physically, but my friends just kept me kept me calm and kept me grounded. Like when I was freaking out, they were just like, like, you can get this done. Like if anybody can do it, it's you. So I'm very fortunate to have the people around me that I do. Well, I had a question about if there was ever a point that you thought that it was too much, but I guess world skills was it. Oh, definitely. But what kind of lessons have you picked up along the way that you would want to share with somebody who's sitting in a class at Palm Marine or so? Honestly, mm -hmm. if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. That is the beginning of it. If you don't have that self-assurance and that confidence, even if you don't have all of it, just to have the belief in yourself and tell yourself that you can do it, half the work is done. Because that, that's half of it. You also have to love what you're doing. When you're passionate about something, it shows in the work that you do and it becomes easier, especially in a field like this that's so taxing, it's so physically demanding. You just really need to just believe in yourself. And even if you don't have that confidence, fake it until you, until you make it, honestly. Just don't forget to actually make it in the process. Focus on the making you it. You have to focus on the making it. You mentioned earlier, you know, when you started, there weren't that many females 
it's changed a bit but you know it's still a male dominated area it's still the boys in the work environment and even outside how how has that been for you you find it as a challenge you find it as a motivation to prove you know i can be i can be part of the best in terms of the females how oh definitely it's still a very male dominated field but i found in recent years that a lot more women are pursuing culinary arts i've seen it in the kitchen at work we have a lot of female chefs and at Pomerine when I do get to visit there are a lot more women pursuing culinary arts and working with world skills now there are a lot more girls that are actually coming forward and taking part in what are male dominated skills um, in terms of if it's a motivator or not I don't really think I have anything to prove I've accomplished a lot for someone my age and I didn't necessarily have the confidence at first but having gone through what I've gone through all the experiences I pretty much believe I can handle anything I put my mind to. So I don't really think I have anything to prove. There have been instances where I've been downright disrespected because not only of my age, but my gender. So it's, it's just, you really have to take it as it comes. Like take everything with a grain of salt. People might not necessarily believe in you, but as I said, once you believe in yourself, half the work is done. Correct. Along with your academic um, accomplishments so far, is there anything else you do to supplement? I think there was a time when we spoke, you had talked about how much you like watching Food Network. Definitely. Yeah, you want to talk a little bit about I that? actually don't watch as much Food Network as before, I guess. Like being in the kitchen, I see it every day. So television is something that's relaxing for me. So I don't want that work environment. I spend most of my time just sleeping or relaxing, listening to music. Anything to bring me down because I'm usually very wired after I come from work. So anything to relax me and just get me in a proper headspace and reading to get me to sleep because we have very long days. The balance is important for you. Very, very important. You can't overwork yourself. In a field like this, you're going to be tired physically and mentally. You have to find a way to just bring yourself down, find things that you enjoy to just get you in a headspace of, OK, I'm no longer at work. I'm still in that working mode because after going for so long, it's hard to just turn it off. So you need to find things that just relax you, whether it's going for a walk, go to the beach, go and watch the sunset, anything that personally would just relax you. Nice. Last year, we at the NCF, we were forced to move our NIFCA presentation, our entire NIFCA, which represents all the arts, to an online format. And we introduced this thing called the independence mystery basket and you were a part of that you yes, want to take us to that experience and how it was for you that was another thing i didn't know whether or not i'd be capable of doing i've never hosted anything so when i was provided with the opportunity i did start to panic a bit but andre who works with peter andre griffith she's the culinary coordinator at caribbean cuisines culinary institute i told i like literally called her was like i don't know if i could do this like genuinely i'm not sure and she just looked at me and was like, yes, you can. Like, it wasn't an argument. She wasn't taking off or anything. She was like, you can do it. So I decided to just take the plunge. Like, if I didn't like it, I could say that I tried. But it was honestly a very eye-opening experience. I learned that I could host, especially if it's something that is about cooking, because that's something that I love near, very, very dearly. And it was amazing. Honestly, I'd do it again. In, in this journey, do you have a favorite, uh, I don't know, pastry, cuisine, uh, seafood? I, I don't know you have something or a dish or something you prefer that you think is your specialty or you just delve into everything? Well, personally, I like anything that's pasta. Even though I'm lactose intolerant, cheese is one of my favorite things. She want me my personal chef. Cheese is one of my favorite things, so pasta is my thing. But recently at work, I've been dealing a lot with sushi. So that's something I've become really passionate about and it's hard. It takes work and to be creative when we put on buffets because we have the say in what we put on the buffet. My boss is just like, do what you do best. So having people that believe in you, especially people in positions of power, is very liberating and very inspiring. So sushi is it for me right now. I'm working on that and just bettering myself every day. Fair enough. Um, to the future, this is the final question. I know none of us, we're, we're not oracles, we don't have a crystal ball. As it relates to possibly your qualifications, even if you see yourself working for someone or if you want to go into your own business, what kind of thoughts, even if not concretize, 
occupy your mind as it relates to your future? Hmm. Well, right now I'm actually pursuing an accreditation with the, Amer the American Culinary Federation. It's basically like on the same level as a bachelor's, but it doesn't take as long. And it's, a, it's governed by a body of chefs, so it's literally people who know everything about the business. And they're just, they just care about getting young people and giving them the information necessary to get the job done. In terms of entrepreneurship, I don't think entrepreneurship is for me. I don't see myself as somebody, I see myself as a leader, yes, but I don't want to be running my own business, at least not now, maybe in a couple years, because I can't guarantee in 10 years I won't change my mind. I'm not going to be the same person I am today. But I'm quite enjoying working for other people. I won't have to take my work home with me. When I leave my job, the job is done, and I can just relax and compartmentalize. So, yeah, the future is pretty much unknown. As you said, we're not oracles, but I don't really have any plans set in stone per se. I don't like to put myself in a box. So I don't like to say, oh, in 10 years, I would like, because again, in 10 years, I might not be the same person I am today. So setting a goal for myself for 32 when I'm 22, it doesn't seem conducive to me, but that's just me personally. Because even in 10 years, there's no guarantee that I'm still gonna be a chef. I might wake up and decide I wanna be an astronaut, like anything is possible. So I just want to be successful and happy and at peace with whatever I do decide to do in my future. Nice. I want to end kind of where we started. At eight years old, and I mean, you've told me the story quite a few <laughs> times, but it always, it, it jerks me in a way. You knew what you wanted to do, and here you are at 22. I'm gonna flip the script a bit. What would you say to a parent of a child who's eight years old, who's determined that they want a career in culinary arts? What would your advice be to them? Honestly, believe in your child. I think a lot of the times, especially with skills in general, people have this perception that skills persons are not necessarily smart. And it's always, oh, academic this, you should be a doctor, you should be a lawyer, and it irks me. It really does, because skills are just important, if not more important than academics. So believe in your child, like, Yes, my parents didn't necessarily believe that I would stick with it because at the end of the day, I'm eight. So it's possible that I'd wake up tomorrow and say I want to be a fairy. We have various interests, but they never tried to dissuade me. They never tried to change my mind. They were just like, okay, if that's what you want to do, come in the kitchen on Sundays and help us cook. Like that, those were the opportunities that I was given. They just let me go with it. So just believe in your child and don't dissuade them. Other people will try, <laughs> for sure. I remember when I was at school even, I... I am a smart child, I, a smart girl rather, I would say that and I was someone who said I wanted to be a chef from the jump, like it was, I never changed my mind. I had so many teachers tell me that I was wasting my potential, that I was wasting my time, that I could change the world, I could be a doctor, I could be a lawyer, I could pursue this, I could pursue that, but who's to say I can't change the world from in the kitchen? If you love something, that's enough, like that is literally enough. Once you are passionate about what you're doing, that's the most important, so believe in your child and just let them let them decide because choosing a career is very, very difficult. It's something that you're possibly going to be doing for the rest of your life. And I do think we do it quite young, starting at like 16 years old, deciding what you're going to do at university, how you're going to like fit the rest of your life into this vision that you have for yourself. So just that self-belief and that self-confidence is really important. And to have a good support system makes it even easier. Shea, thank you so much. Such a positive note to end on. Thank you for giving us of your time. You're, you're either dressed <laughs> for work or you know came from work. Thanks for fitting us in. And we at the NCF, we wish you the very best. And keep in contact and keep your relationship with us mutually beneficial. Well done. Thank you very much for your time as well.